Numerical Computation, Chapter 7, Video 3. We now look at an improvement over Jacobi iteration. So let's recall the Jacobi iteration. We know for each equation number i, we compute a iteration like this. And in this summation, we sum over all j's from 1 to n, except when j equals to i. So we skip the diagonal element. So basically, this summation can be breaking up into two summations, one of those j less than i and the other of those j bigger than i. And that's exactly what we write down here. So this part is the summation j from 1 to i minus 1. So all the xj's are smaller than xi index, and these are for the big index. We now make the following observation. If now my computation is done in a sequential way, that is, I go through i equals to 1, 2, 3, all the way to n, then in the first summation term, this term here, all the xj values are actually already computed for step k plus 1. And now, assuming that it converges, or we hope for convergence, then the value at step k plus 1 shall be a better one than the value at the step k. So we would be better off if we use those better values right away. So we will replace all these xjk's with the newly computed xjk plus 1. And this is exactly the Gauss-Seidel iteration. Okay, so the main idea of Gauss-Seidel iteration is use the latest computer value for xi's. So here's the algorithm. Chosen the initial guess, which is the same, and then we run through the iteration until stop criteria, which is the same. And then for each equation, now we go through it in a sequential way, and we have this iteration. This is the same as the Jacobi iteration, except for this summation sign, we have a new thing here, that is this k plus 1. That's new, so we're using the newly computed value. Let's talk about this algorithm. So there's one thing really good about it, that is every time you compute a new value for xi, since it will be used right away in the next um, equation, then there is no need for you to keep two vectors. You can simply overwrite into the x vector. Okay? So we actually need only one vector to store information for both xk and xk plus 1, because we simply overwrite. That saves memory space. And also, later we'll see the method actually converges a bit faster. But it has its own disadvantages. Because it's a sequential method, and the computation must be done in the order i equals to 1, 2, 3, in the increasing order of i, therefore it doesn't allow flexibility for parallel computing. Now let's take an example, the same example we did for Jacobi iteration, and now we set up the Gauss-Seidel, and we perform a few iterations to see how it works. And we will start with the same initial guess also. So this will be the iteration for Gauss-Seidel. It looks almost identical as those for Jacobi, except for the newly computed values for the index less than the one on the left-hand side, like this one, we'll be using the newly computed value, and also this one will be using the newly computed value, because x1 k plus 1 is just computed, and x2 k plus 1 is also computed. And we will run a couple of iterations and see how it goes. So put in this initial value and you compute x1, I get 0 0.25, 1.125, 1.156, 1 something like that. And one more iteration, I got 0 0.56, 1.5, and 1.78. And we'll observe that this x2 actually is getting 
closer to the exact answer, which is 1, 2, 2, than the x3 we had for Jacobi iteration. So it does converge a bit faster, but without um, detailed theoretical analysis, and that's all we can say. Okay, so next time we will look at even another method, an improvement on the Gauss-Seidel. Okay, hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.